The characters in Poppy Playtime are friendly. Well, according to everything that we hear from the past two chapters in the game, this is a case at least in the past. So in this video, I want to talk about a few things. One being why they were of course friendly and who they were friendly to, what the real tensions of the toy experiments actually were and what they were trying to produce from them. And finally, what in the world happened to the toys that made them turn hostile even towards their own beings by the time we enter the factory. So first, there's a few things that we need to know before theorizing that you may or may not already be familiar with depending on how invested you are in the Poppy Playtime story. First, all the monsters we encounter are experiments to try and create toys from the factory into real life beings. We have examples of successful experiments like Poppy, who seems to be well done reincarnations of humans into these inanimate toys. And of course, there's different types of failing experiments like Huggy Wuggy, who seems to be more evil and malicious. And as we theorized in our last video, there's the most important experiment of them all, Experiment 1006, which if you didn't know happened to be this claw figure that takes away Mommy Longlegs' head after she dies in the second chapter. Anyway, in my last theory video, I pointed out the future importance of this experiment, but for reasons I'll discuss in a few, I think the most important part of this experiment may actually be what has already happened in the past. Anyway, moving away from that, let's talk about some specific experiments. Actually, let's narrow it down all the way to Huggy Wuggy. I had just mentioned before that I thought he was considered a failed experiment, and of course, in regards to what we see whenever we first meet him, that seems to line up pretty well. I mean, the moment we first see him in the chapter, he hides away until he attempts to kill us. But what if I told you Huggy was actually originally the definition of a perfect experiment in the employee's eyes? Well, this is actually true, because in one of the tapes we find around the map talking about the prototype hand that we just mentioned, we know he is incredibly smart and can make things all on his own. However, at the end of that same log, we hear that he is very unlike the Huggy Wuggy experiment. Because unlike the prototype, Huggy is not only supposedly super smart, but he is also easy to control and is obedient. This was something that MatPat had brought up in his own theory, and in his video, I saw a lot of comments saying that they thought Huggy, like a few of the other toys, just simply didn't like humans. And when employees referenced the word obedience, they were actually referring to the other more intelligent toys like the prototype. But I personally don't think this can be the case. And the reason for that is because originally the employees had full control of these experiments, initially starting with one of the first and perfect experiments named Poppy. She was seen as an incredible success. She was conscious, non-hostile, and overall was about as close as possible to a real-life version of the Poppy Playtime doll. This was great news for the employees, but this was also super confusing to them because while Poppy was a successful experiment, it was clear that the employees had no idea how they made her, because inside of Chapter 2 we see Elliot Ludwig logged down trying to use poppy flowers to bring rats to life, which proved to us that the poppy experiment not only brought something to life, but it also proved that the employees had no idea how they did it, since of course in this log, they were testing similar elements used to make Poppy on rats to try and revive them. And that's actually also why she was locked away in a case at the beginning of chapter one, because they were trying to study her and figure out what made her unique, especially when all the other experiments were failing. Anyway, that means that the definition of a successful experiment like Poppy is alive, smart, and gives obedience to not just anybody, but the workers themselves. Because I mean, how else would they be able to keep the Poppy doll inside of some random glass case for 30 years? Because realistically, if she didn't want to be in there, she had all the means to retaliate. And this relates to the Huggy Wuggy experiment because if he was another version of a perfect experiment, that means most likely he was also listening to his creators who happen to be humans, and humans happen to include us, the player. But the thing is, despite that, he still ends up attacking us in chapter one regardless. And why is that? Well, I'll answer that in a few, but before I also want to show some more inconsistencies in the toy's behavior compared to their experiment logs. Look at Mommy Longlegs. She is one of the largest toys, and her name is literally Mommy and therefore she is quite literally the mother to all the experiments. We know this because as I've said in other videos, Mommy was like a caregiver to all the other toys. She respected them and clearly was a superior to them, which makes a lot of sense. It's also worth mentioning too that in her experiment logs, she did not like humans, which going back also kind of proves that Huggy had a more healthy relationship with the employees than other experiments, because it's labeled specifically here that she hated the employees. But then again, they did hold her captive and were artificially creating more of her kind, so I can obviously obviously understand it. But overall, once again, we are seeing multiple friendly attributes from Mommy. She loved the other toys, was caring to them, and was very non-violent towards the other experiments. But once again, things change when we get to the second chapter, because a small detail you probably won't notice is that every time we beat the toys in the games that Mommy puts us through, she literally kills them, which is the exact opposite to what her experiment logs were saying once again. So here's where we start to see some of the incredibly noticeable similarities between the first two chapters when they're lined up. Huggy was 
was a great experiment. He was smart and listened to the workers inside of the factory, but in the actual game, he did the exact opposite and seemed to target us. While Mommy, on the other hand, appears to be sweet and kind to the other toys. She obviously wasn't happy with our presence because it was already mentioned that she didn't like the employees, but she also goes rogue against her own kind, killing them and doing the exact opposite of what she is shown to do in the logs. But why are both of these toys doing these evil actions? Well, you could go full conspiracy and theorize that all the experiment logs were lies and the entire company's view has been entirely fabricated up to this point, but there actually is a realistic way to explain these instances and they all start with the prototype, more specifically his origins. So to give some background, we chronologically only hear about the prototype for the first time in the same tape where we are told about Huggy Wuggy's existence as well. This tape, like mentioned, tells us how unbelievably intelligent the prototype is, but he didn't want to listen to the employees like Huggy did. This doesn't give us too many clues as to what the prototype's intentions are, but we know right out of the gate that he is damn smart. But with that being said, if his one flaw is that he's not very friendly towards the workers, you can imagine what that intelligence can do. Because if we actually go back to the final tape in chapter 1, we hear about the coming tragedies that the prototype or experiment 1006 would end up causing to the factory. The murder of employees all across the factory would cause the initial tragedy that ruined everything and led to them all disappearing. But the thing is, there's no dead bodies, and so far in the game, we've seen no remnants of the employee's existence. Or at least that's what we may think. The prototype was obviously the one that rebelled on everybody and destroyed their bodies, but why in the world would he do this? Well, we could obviously theorize for the sake of rebellion and freedom, because being concealed down for testing is not a good way to live, especially for a creature that seems well aware of its surroundings to realize how bad they must have been. But I also think there was a second, way more in-depth reason. We were told in the tapes how smart the prototype was by its ability to repurpose objects. The main example being the prototype's ability to turn a clock into a laser pointer. And the reason why this is so important is because considering that all the employees are gone, and considering that the prototype was so good at reverse engineering and creating new things, I don't think it's a stretch to say that the employees could have been killed by the prototype, and then have them be repurposed for himself like what he did to the alarm clock. We sort of assume that the prototype is a living thing just because every other experiment is, but the thing is, the only human part we see on the prototype's claw is a human bone. And while this could just be a part of its actual biology, I also think it's possible that this bone could actually be of the employee's own remains. Just because the only live part of the prototype's body, which is the bone, happens to be the only part of the human body that wouldn't decay over time. And also, unlike the other experiments, this one is basically entirely mechanical besides these bones. And while we don't know why this experiment is called the prototype, while all the others are clearly named after toys and represent others, I wonder if it's related to how much different fundamentally this figure is. But regardless of whether or not we believe the employees were repurposed into this mechanical figure, we do know one thing for sure, which is that this prototype in particular feeds on other beings. And while I believe that the reason the employees are gone is because the prototype ate them, eventually, as we know, all the employees disappeared and therefore the prototype had nothing to feed off of. So with that being said, there'd be no living things for the prototype to take. However, if we look around, there's tons of living toys scattered throughout the entire factory to eat. And thus, I think it's possible that the prototype had seemingly turned against the other toys. We know that the factory did tons and tons of experiments, just because we know the prototype is Experiment 1006, and the latest Mommy Longlegs experiment was named Experiment 1222, which gives room for over 200 different experiments in between that we don't really see throughout the map. And I'm really starting to wonder if the reason we don't see them is because the prototype may have taken them away. But tying into the main theory, how does this have anything to do with the toys that are still around going rogue? Well, I actually think it's pretty simple. Survival instinct brings savagery. Similar to stories like Lord of the Flies, when human beings are put in life or death situations, their true intentions come forward. And while obviously these aren't directly humans, they're supposed to be reincarnations of human beings as experiments. And as we see when Huggy Wuggy gets confronted by the first living being in 30 years, after spending what seems like his entire lifespan watching humans and other experiments get torn apart alive, it's either eat or be eaten in his eyes. And therefore he sneaks around the map during the chapter without us ever noticing him unless you were very observant, until we run into the perfect dark hallway where he tries to ambush us when we're not expecting it. And for Mommy's case, it feels more like a temperament problem. She confronts the player and clearly isn't scared of us like how Huggy may have been. However, her failure to take us out like how the prototype had successfully done to what she thought was every other employee must have deeply infuriated her as we can see her progressively 
be turning more and more crazy throughout the chapter. This also couples with the fact that our entire goal in the chapter is to try and take Poppy one of the toys outside of the factory. And so imaginably the character who is seen as the caregiver to them would not be happy if one of the employees tried to take her away. Especially since there's not very many experiments left after the prototype flooded the factory killing everybody and everything. Now this doesn't really neatly tie up why she decides to murder every toy after we surpass them, but I imagine it has something to do with her incredible anger, along with how useless the toys must seem for failing to kill what she hates. But either way, Huggy and Mommy at the end of the day were incredibly unsuccessful in their missions to stop us. And in fact, with some context clues, we can see that they were both taken away by the prototype themselves. For Mommy, it's pretty obvious because we can see her head literally get dragged away in the prototype, and while she's dying, she literally screams in fear about being made, quote, a part of him. So that's pretty obvious, but what about Huggy? We never see him get dragged away, in fact, we just see him fall into a pit. But we can basically confirm that this factory room in specific is where Huggy himself fell, because on the railings we can see blood and his own hair. But the thing is, most people actually think that he survived this fall, got back up, and then crawled through this little vent that seemingly had no purpose at all in the chapter. And while when you read it out like that, it does make sense, I do also find it incredibly convenient that this vent in question also happens to be the perfect size for a little claw-like creature that loves to take dead bodies away into the abyss never to be seen again. So to summarize, the experiments were initially friendly, but the thing is, after the prototype attacked and the company went corrupt, for all the experiments who survived, it became a fend-for-yourself battle where the toys went rogue against us seemingly in fear despite them initially being friendly in a lot of ways. This theory makes the most sense to me, but it also still brings up one important question. We generally see two different versions of each toy that we run into, the happy version and the evil version. Except for one in particular, Kissy Missy. In fact, Kissy goes through efforts to actually help us by lifting a lever we needed to progress, followed by her leaving without ever touching us. Maybe she's the smarter of the two huggy looking creatures, I'm not exactly sure. But the thing is, while not exactly canon, we know she may have a rogue side as well, because if we look at the Monsters and Mortals teaser images, we can see that she also has an evil face similar to Huggy. But I guess for now, we'll find all this out in Chapter 3. And I guess while you're here, check out my last theory where I predicted Chapter 3's entire contents. Subscribe and peace.